Hello, and welcome back to Dice at Arms. Got something a little bit different for you this week. Now, I'm sure you've noticed, I quite like the 100 Kingdoms, especially the Household Knights. I'm sure that for many other players like me, they would have been the primary reason for choosing this faction. I mean, when people talk about medieval fantasy, it's just so easy to envision spectacular shining armour astride a beautiful horse covered in the colours of their rider. And the sheer size of these models, over those of many other war games, means it's easier for us, less than expert painters, to work with. But still, you might be wondering, how am I going to paint them? Well, for this episode, I'm going to cover some basics on medieval heraldry and how you can incorporate their principles into your models. Let's begin. At its core, medieval heraldry uses a very limited palette of colours and patterns, divided into three groups called metals, colours and furs. The two metals are gold and silver, but they are frequently painted just as yellow and white. For colours, we have blue, red, purple, black and green. And for furs, we have ermine, vair and then many variants. So before we start doing anything complicated with these colours, the first thing to remember is what's called the rule of tincture. Don't put metal on metal and don't put colours on colours. So you can't do gold on silver and you can't do blue on black. Unless, of course, you just choose to ignore it, much like the arms of Jerusalem do. But the rule is there in general to make the designs much easier to distinguish. Blue on black is much harder to see the design than gold on black. Next up, the field, or more simply, the background of the shield. We can leave it with a solid colour, or we can use two different colours to create a pattern. I'd recommend only painting checkered, if you are absolutely insane. Much like our vanguard David Richardson. I mean, he's done an amazing job with them, but bloody hell, I do not envy the work that must have gone into this. The field can also be divided in a few different ways. Horizontally, vertically, diagonally, quartered, or per chevron. With each division then having more details added to it. Speaking of, we have two options here. We can have what is called an ordinary, and these were especially common. Simple, bold shapes that could be easily recognised at long distances, as well as, well, easily remembered. And our other option is a charge, an object or a creature. I mean, there's an infinite number of what you could put on here with roses and towers and lions and eagles and dragons and anything you can come up with. I mean, you've got an even bigger selection to choose from. This is a fantasy world. The final thing we can do with our design is to cross it with another. And there are three ways of doing this. The first is demediation, just simply combining two halves of different designs. The second is by impaling, dividing the shield in two and squeezing the full design into each half. The last method is called in escutcheon, with another heraldic shield placed in the fore of the design. This crossing of shields was often done to denote lineage when two families got married. In medieval designs, this crossing of shields would continue to an insane degree with dozens of different designs on one shield. However, for keeping things simple and easy to identify, I'd recommend no more than four colours. Anything beyond that, and it can start to look a bit busy, especially on a model. In any case, following the principles I've laid out here, you can make some awesome looking medieval designs. And above all, this is still fantasy. You don't have to stick with anything I've talked about in this video. You could throw it all out. You can take your designs wherever you choose. Maybe simply knowing how to break the rules will inspire you. Or maybe you'll make up law to explain why your kingdom doesn't follow this convention. This has been a pretty quick rundown on heraldry. I hope you found it useful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to see more historical content, don't forget to check out my other channel over at Castles and Curiosities. Thank you very much for watching. I'll have more for you soon.